Welcome back, Outlaws. On today's episode, we're going to be doing an unboxing and first use of the Lotos Digital Plasma Cutter, so stay tuned. I've been wanting a plasma cutter for a long time. After doing a lot of research and talking with some friends who had a similar model, I chose this one. I'm not a professional. I do lots of repairs and lots of hobby work. I was looking for a unit that was light and portable and didn't require a huge compressor and that I could use with dual voltages, 240 and 120. I purchased this adapter cord so that I may use the unit in a 15 amp, 120 volt circuit. This will allow me the flexibility of using this machine in areas where I do not have access to 240 volts. And now for the part that I've been waiting for, let's get this thing unboxed. Looks like it's packed pretty well with some dense foam padding. This thing appears to be pretty well tightly packed. This is good as it prevents damage in shipping. This looks to be most of our contents here in this box. Let's get in here and check them out. I'm going to go ahead and get this warranty card filled out as soon as I get this thing unboxed. This appears to be some kind of strap for something. I'm sure once we get the rest of this out of here, we'll figure that out. What's in this package here? Get it opened up and see. Oh, okay. This looks like it's the consumables that go to the end of the torch. Next we have an air hose, it looks like. Not sure if I'll be using that. And this looks like the grounding cable and clamp. Let's get this thing opened up and check it out. Uh, this appears to be pretty sturdy. The wire's got good shrink wrap, good thick shrink wrap on it. The cable seems to be a pretty good size. Nice uh, copper grounding strap in there. Seems pretty well put together. This here is the plasma torch itself. Let's get this bad boy out of here and check it out. Another cool feature about this torch that I really like is all you have to do is pull the trigger to start cutting. The other torches in the model previous to this one, you actually had to drag the tip of the torch along the metal to start the arc. This increased the use of your consumables. With this feature on this unit, your consumables will last longer. For those of you that are watching and learning as I have done, the consumables are almost sacrificial pieces to the end of the torch that you'll have to replace as you use the torch. They wear out frequently, and with this feature on this torch, this will help them last longer. This looks like a pretty good little owner's manual. We'll be going through this a little bit later.
Actually, right here is this little sheet that shows all the consumables that go into the torch. And this little diagram shows the pieces, how they fit in there, and how you should replace them. And that's about it for this box here. Now, there's only one thing left to check out, so let's get to it. All right, and now for the part that I've been waiting for, right here. Out of curiosity, I checked the weight on this thing, and it weighs 20 pounds. It's about 17 inches long, 7 inches wide, and about 12 inches high. Here's a closer look at the cord and the adapter that we'll be using to plug into it. This is going to be a really great option when all I have is a 120-15 amp circuit to plug into. Let's give it a quick spin and see what it looks like. Once again, it's about 17 inches long, 7 inches wide, and 12 inches high. Here's the back and the power switch, and where we're going to hook up the air. It's nice, it has a quick disconnect. Here's a shot of the front panel. This unit seems pretty well put together and sturdy, and I think it will last quite a long time. In a little bit, when we fire this thing up, we'll be going over all of these little gauges and numbers and buttons and what they mean. Okay, let's get this stuff all laid out one last time so that we can begin the process of putting this thing together and then we can use it for the first time. Now that I've read the manual, and I have all the knowledge the universe can offer on this unit, it's time to get busy. And looking at this connector, I can see that these pins have to line up, and there's a little notch here. We'll get that in there, and get that straight, and tighten it up. The grounding cable is next. It also has a little notch on its end that you plug into the unit. Checking that out, you can see it right about... Where is it? Right there. So we'll get that lined up and get that in and get it secured. Here's another quick shot of the diagram of the torch and how the consumables go together. But fortunately, they gave me a package of backups and the torch already has all of that assembly on it when it comes from the factory. Here's the package. We'll go ahead and save that for later when we need to replace those. This is the air hose that came with the unit, but I'm definitely not going to use that. I'm going to use my own with a quick disconnect. 
the shoulder strap connects here to this side over here and makes it easy to carry around, but I probably won't use that either. Okay, it's time to put the adapter on. Let's check it out. There's a certain way this aligns up too. Verify that you have your spades lined up in the right position and then go ahead and put them on and give it a little twist. Let's get the air hooked up with the quick disconnect. The minimum air compressor requirement is 4.5 CFM at 80 PSI with a 30 to 60 gallon reserve. Now that we have our air hooked up, our grounding cable hooked up, and our torch, we've read our manual. We need a project. I got the perfect one. I need a table to cut all these projects on. I don't have a lot of money or funding to go buying one of these fancy plasma tables, so I decided to make one of my own out of a 55 gallon drum that I had laying around the yard. This will be our first use and we'll cut the top off using the torch. This will work great because it will allow all the sparks to fly down into the bucket and be collected where they won't cause a fire. We're going to take a grinder and grind some spots so that we have a good ground to put our grounding clamp on. Good enough for government work. Before we start cutting, we have to set up our air and how the air flows through the torch. Using the manual, it tells us exactly what pressure to set the torch at so that it will cut through the type of metal thickness that we're trying to cut through. Here's a quick shot of the reference table used for setup. To set up our correct operating pressure, we'll begin by pushing the air button. What this does is this cause a constant airflow through the nozzle so that you can adjust the airflow to the right pressure. After you've done that by using the knob on the top of the machine, according to the reference chart, you'll then be ready and hit the button again. This will put it back into the cutting function and you'll be ready with your air pressure set. With the 2T option selected, press the trigger to fire the torch. You need to hold the trigger while continuing the cut. Release the trigger to stop the arc. With the 4T option selected, press the trigger to fire the torch. You can then release the trigger while continuing to cut. Press the trigger once more to stop cutting. For today, I'll have it in the 2T position. After setting the amperage, I think we're ready to cut. I had this old grate laying around and I thought this would make the perfect top for my table. 
it would allow me to lay pieces of metal on top and cut without burning through the top of the table. If you like what you saw in the video, hit that like button, share it, and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. So far, after this quick use of this little cutter, I'm impressed. It does a great job. With this little plasma cutter, there will be no end to the jobs and projects that I will be able to do. This is a great tool to add to the arsenal of the Outlaws workshop. Once again, thanks for watching.